Greetings and welcome to the Umbrella Academy with your substitute teachers, Mr. Tyler and Mr. LePage. Woo-hoo. We are here and we are going to party because that we don't care. We have short-term employment. Yeah, we got three days to live. We got three days to live, so we're going to watch a movie in class today. And I'm talking all day. And it's going to be whatever you want, even if there are swears. So Ooh. choose your swears wisely. When you were a kid, Pete, what was the movie in school that was like, whoa, I can't believe we got to watch that when something weird happened? Uh, glory. We got to see Glory. And when the dude's head exploded, uh, that was pretty crazy. Wow, that's still educational. And when I was growing up, something happened one day. I still don't know what, but we, they put on National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, and what? it was a it was a mistake because we were not ready for that level of movie in like fifth grade or whatever. Yeah, that's a that's a lot going on in that. Indeed, it is. And that's an education, and we're here to talk about education, specifically the Umbrella Academy season one, episode six, the day that wasn't. Yeah. That's you know what I'm Which talking is- about. Which is sad because a lot of things happened in this day and then it's all taken back, which is uh, it's sad. Now, we are real believers in the time stream. So should we only review the portions of this episode that actually happened and forget the rest? Or do you want to break our rule and yeah, cover some I, of this are alternate? No rules, buddy. It's just you and me. There's no Zalbin to make us do the right thing. We can do whatever yes. the fuck we want. Man. Zalbin is our sort of um, the commission, um, yeah. always <laughs> making us do stuff we yeah. don't want to do. But yeah. he's not here. Teachers Woo-hoo. out. Woo-hoo. Substitute teachers rock. Yeah. Um, so let's get into it, though. Um, a quick recap. As you said earlier, um, the uh, world is ending in three days. Uh, yeah. We don't know why. Um, f- uh, Umbrella Academy um, number five, Mr. Five, five. He's called Mr. Five in this episode. He came back from the post-apocalyptic future and has set this ticking clock of when the world's going to end. He's been investigating. He's been slowly bringing all the other members of the Umbrella Academy uh, kids who were brought together from all around the world. Um, they all have superpowers, except for Vanya, question mark. Yeah. Question well, mark. This, this episode proves she got powers. Yes. Uh, we it's have that medication, power. man. Kids, listen. If you have medication, don't take it. You know? that, is, that is not good <laughs> advice. That is not something you say. You're a bad substitute teacher. Yeah, what's up? But, I mean, that's kind of the lesson here is Vanya has been taking medication her whole life. Uh, She's tricked into stopping taking by her evil boyfriend and uh, finds out that she has powers. And there was this kind of question in the episode of, like, if I may go off on a tangent, of, like, um, you know, maybe her father's known the whole time. And Mm. I think that's an interesting point because, like, yeah, if the father knew that she had this, like, evil potential, maybe that's why he just said, hey, you don't have powers. Well, I think, I mean, we can talk about this in a second. Let's actually give a quick um, rundown of the characters and what's going on with them before we get back into that. Um, The father, um, he's the gentleman that put together the Umbrella Academy, sort of a Professor X. Cold dude. Uh, Professor X, without all the fun, um, he uh, brought all of these, um, uh, not orphans, but these special children together, took them yeah, away I mean, from their families. he took them away from their families. It's not yes. like he, you know, he kind of bought them. Yeah. Uh, Professor Hargreaves. Let he, me just so, ask you, Justin, if a rich person just showed up at your door and was like, listen, I'll give you a million dollars for each kid, what, what would you do? For both? I don't know. That seems like a lot to no, take. No, for each. One, one million per kid. But why would they take both? Cause Leave me he's with got one. Money to, he's got money to burn. I don't know. Or he or she's got money to burn. If someone was going to offer you a million dollars for your kid, no questions asked. Uh, How are, I mean, this is also, I'm asking you because we're in the middle of a COVID pandemic, schools, I mean, all this madness in there. Will you just take nice the money, you know, maybe get your life back a little bit? I mean, where are you? Here's the fucked up thing. I paid a million dollars for both of my children. Oh. And, uh, I'm, the, I'm the Professor Hargreaves in this situation. So far, no powers. Um, not sure what's going to happen here. Uh, and picked him up at the wrong time because of this pandemic. Uh, but... Uh, Great question, sort of an indecent proposal in a lot of ways. But <laughs> let's let's keep going and talk about. Uh, let's go down the lineup. We've okay. got uh, Luther. He's been yep. on the moon. He's got a gorilla body. He's mm-hmm. got a little thing for Allison. 
yeah. rumor. Um, they had a, as we learned in this episode, they had a little bit of a uh, fledgling romance that was interrupted by their dad. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, we've got um, number. I mean, five. we should point they're not really siblings; they were pulled from different f- families because it feels a little creepy, brother and sister hanging out, you know, like that. But then when you realize, oh, they're not actually related. Not Genetically speaking, it's yeah. still like d- growing up with someone and then dating them is still tricky. Uh, yeah. The genetics aside, okay. Um, okay. We sounds got, like somebody speaking from uh, experience over there. Uh, no, no, I have uh, a couple cousins who are married. Um, <laughs> the uh, but they're on, <laughs> op- they're on opposite sides. They're on opposite sides of my family. So it's one cousin from my mom's side, one cousin from my dad's side. So they're not actually related. I'm just related to both of them. Wow. Does that make sense? I was the best man at the wedding, and um, the bride was like, whatever you do, could you not bring up the cousin uh, <laughs> thing? That's a hard ask right there, because that's yes, like the big I, thing on everybody's it, mind. And I definitely did bring it up. <laughs> good for you. I, I'm uh, a good man. I'm not the best man. Hey, um, I hear you. <laughs> so we have, uh, we have Klaus. Um, he has the ability to see ghosts, uh, notably their uh, brother that died. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This episode is a storyline involving those powers, Ben. Uh, and then we have, uh, of course, number five we mentioned, Time Traveler. He's mm-hmm. trapped in his uh, child body, um, despite the fact that he spent many, many years as an, a time-traveling assassin for an organization called The Commission, yep. he would, which uh, is trying to preserve the time stream no matter how bad the thing that happens happens. And we don't really know what their motivation is uh, besides that, because they're not trying to make the time stream better. They're trying to keep this apocalypse that Five is um, trying to stop from ha- They're trying to keep it having happened. So yeah. it's a little, we, it's mysterious. Mm-hmm. Um, we have Diego, sort of our Batman type hero, good with a knife. Sure, uh, sure. He um, hit some tragedy when his um, sort of on again, off again girlfriend, a police detective, was killed. Um, he's trying to get some revenge while also sort of half trying to solve this mystery. Their mother, they find out, found out, is a robot. Um, mm-hmm. And Diego especially is concerned about her. Um, because they he murdered a, her. Yes. Uh, well, he didn't really murder her. Well, she was a robot. He unplugged her. I mean, that's kind of robot murder. When your phone dies, do you consider it murder? Uh, Do you, if I don't plug it back in, yeah. Really? That's mm-hmm. uh, what a tragic life you have. Yeah, I do. Um, and then, of course, we have Vanya, um, mm-hmm. who uh, is has been left out of the Umbrella Academy her whole life. She is a violinist. She just made first chair. She's dating a man named Leonard, who has at least one dead body uh, in his upstairs attic. Um, and she seems she uh, struggles with being left out of the family. Yeah. Also, um, we should say she didn't make uh, first chair on her own. Uh, Leonard murdered the person who was in first chair. So, yes, it just kind of opened up, um, which is that's how a lot of first chairs get get switched around. Yeah. A lot of people don't talk about it. But when you see an orchestra performing, just know while you're enjoying the beautiful music, people died. Okay, A lot of people died. Definitely take that in. Yeah, and don't uh, we, do any research on that. It's just it's just facts. There's yeah, no just point. Yeah, yeah, just facts. We only say facts. We're substitute teachers. We yeah. know what's up. <laughs> yeah. Trust us implicitly, except for the stuff Pete said about taking your medicine. Yeah. Uh, a couple other characters um, of note. We have um, Pogo, their mm-hmm. uh, their monkey butler, who is um, has some secrets. He seems to know a little bit more about. Um, their father's motivations than he lets on and is starting to leak that stuff out, perhaps. Uh, we have Hazel and Cha-Cha. They oh, are man. assassins. Uh, Two of my favorites. Favorites. Um, they are assassins sent by the commission mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. to uh, kill number five. Just um, some worker bees, you know what Worker I mean? bees. Um, and one person who has a love of donuts, that, that love brought him another love. Yep. Uh, but, you know, we don't know if they'll ever make it. You know? Hazel has a secret relationship with a donut waitress. Um, and uh, that's trouble in this episode. Uh, just a couple other things to say. Klaus traveled back to Vietnam, we learned last episode. We get some uh, more information about Accidentally, that. Accidentally, because of the suitcase. He, it's not like he can time travel. It's not his power. Right. And then Luther found out um, that all of the Umbrella Academy die in three days, along with the rest of the world. Right. And uh, that sort of rattles them uh, in uh, this as episode. As it should. As it should. I mean, if you found out that you had three days to live or that in three days you were going to die, 
you know, it, it would rattle you, I would think. Do you think you'd still sleep at night? You'd still get a good sleep if you had three days to go? Well, it depends on what am I doing with the other two. Like, if I'm like, oh, man, I've got a good night's sleep because my plan is to drive to Hawaii and party for one full day, then, you know what, I would take some NyQuil, knock myself out, and then get ready for that drive. You know what I mean? That's great. And let me just say real quick, you said drive to Hawaii, well, yeah. which is not easy. I will no. tell you that much. No. So no. Um, I look forward to hearing what your plan is. <laughs> Three days to left left in the world, and Pete drove off a pier in Santa Monica and ended up at the bottom of the the ocean. Uh, sad way to go, but hey, um, that's Pete. I mean, hey, you're kind of going out with your own dream, with your own destiny in hand and a plan. I mean, there are worse ways to die. That's that's true. Then driving to Hawaii. I would think driving to Hawaii is one of the worst ways to die because everyone would be nah. like, well, that's very stupid. <laughs> It depends how you look at it, man. You know, if you're die chasing your dream, I mean, it's the, I don't think it's a sad way to go. Yep, he's a dreamer. He always dreamed of doing very stupid things. <laughs> um, so let's get into this episode. We'll just do a sort of a brief overview and get into sort of the larger issues. Sure, sure. Um, I have a I have a big question for you. Uh, for now or for later? Oh, that's a good. I don't know, but I, I'll you decide. So. What do you think was the most important thing that was taken away in this episode? Uh, great. Let's do that later. So once we've talked about this. Damn it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, good guess. Um, and in this way, um, the student has become the master. Ooh. Because now you've been demoted to student and I am now <laughs> the master. Uh, oh, okay. So uh, we start with some Substitute flat- master. I should substitute say. master. Yes. Yeah. And substitute student. Um, we're like the Hazel and Cha-Cha of the Umbrella <laughs> Park Academy. Yeah. And in, in that eventually we will kill each other. Uh so we have um, we get some flashback to Klaus. Um, it's really great scenes with um, Klaus in Vietnam um, with Dave. Yeah, and Dave. He meets this uh, man. They have a relationship. It's really sweet. Feels yeah. like Klaus is actually genuine. Someone who struggled with addiction and like just can't get on sort of the level with everybody else that in his family. This feels like a time when he was really happy. And his goal in the episode is to get sober to reaccess his power so that he can see Dave, I think, which I thought is a sweet romance. What's great about the Umbrella Academy, um, this first season in general is that they weave so many storylines together at the same time. Yeah. Uh, if Alex was here, he would criticize that it often felt a little all over the place and, um, a little bit belabored. I feel like that's a big criticism for the season, Mm -hmm. but I think in these last two episodes, they really start to get it together. They really start to bring the pace picks up and we start to see stuff happening faster and with greater effect. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. I also, what I appreciate the show while we're talking about it, since Zelda isn't here to shit on it, um, is that it's uh, uh, like chaotic on purpose. Yeah. They throw us into this thing that the main characters don't know what's going on. So it's hard to kind of have some kind of, uh, like simple path or kind of like, which kind of is enjoyable. Also, you always get some amazing musical stuff, which is really fun. And usually some very over the top action. And in this one, we get it kind of in the, uh, in, at the commission headquarters with number five. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's move through. Well, let's finish up with Klaus. Um, in the flashback stuff, I really loved um, the music. Across the board on the show is amazing. Yeah. And the, in the, a later dance sequence we see in this episode, just really great. The locations, the wardrobe, they really, you can see the, the attention to detail so much yeah. in this show for any of its criticisms. Um, Klaus later asks Diego to um, help him get sober, which he does. Mm-hmm. They have sort of a bonding moment where they talk about their lost loves, Dave and um, Diego's police detective. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's sweet. I think this episode, if we were to speak generally about it, it's about them moving past their past issues and and trying to move forward as a group. Yeah. Like um, the overall uh, arc of the episode is the Umbrella Academy all meet. They all go about their separate business. They they decide they can't try to save the day together. Um, five isn't there um, to help guide them. They go their separate ways and sort of everything falls apart. And then right. um, we follow a bunch of action. By the end of the episode, Five travels back in time to this very moment, erases the day and the things that they accomplished. Um, and that's kind of the heartbreaking part is they've all kind of like moved on in a, in, in a way where they've grown as individuals. You know, like each one of them kind of has their own moments 
And it's sad to see them lose that at the end of the episode. I mean, you're happy they're going to take the end of the world thing finally seriously. That's very exciting. But you're kind of sad for all the individual growth, especially uh, Allison and uh, the gorilla guy. Especially Luther. Yeah, especially when it seems like what they need to do is have this individual growth. And that will be what will save them. Yeah. so let, let's let's break down each of those individual sort of threads, um, starting with uh, Luther and Allison. Um, yeah. So they had um, we get a sweet flashback with them. They're up in a little uh, sort of fort in the attic. Mm-hmm. They're having some mm-hmm. colas. They're like clearly into each other as teenagers. They're flirting. Yeah. Uh, the professor comes up. He's mad not because they're like you know flirting. He's mad because they're Saturday's the day when they get to like party. Yeah. Saturday from 12 to 12.15 is fun time or 12.30. Half an hour of fun time in a week. That's insane. That's ridiculous. Yeah, that's not a lot. Like you probably get like 45 to 50 minutes of fun time a week, right? Per day, bro. Per day. Wow. Cutting loose. What are you doing? What do you got planned for your 45 today? I'm not legally. I'm not allowed to uh, share that. But thank you for asking. Uh, no, we're, that means weed, and we're substitute teachers, so we're always a little high. <laughs> uh, so um, Luther struggles in this episode when he finds out that all of the stuff. He, he his whole thing is he's like saving the day, ending this apocalypse must have something to do with my moon work. I was on the moon. Very proud. Which of is that. a weird thing to kind of bring up when the world is ending. That it has to do something when when you were on the moon. You know what I mean? Like it was just super clear. Luther has this baggage that he hasn't kind of come to grips with. So when there's another question mark, he just kind of connects the dots. Well, I uh, mean, he he considered himself the Captain America, the um, right. Cyclops, the um, Ooh, don't bring the, up that the Leonardo. If we're speaking, in okay, turtle. thank you. Okay, yeah. um, so he's the leader. So he's like, why would my father send me the moon if it wasn't the most important thing? Right. So he 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 thinks that um, he finds out. He confronts Pogo. He's like, hey, where are my reports? I sent a lot of reports from the moon. Mm-hmm. Um, and where are they? Why I need to track this down. Come to find out, his father never opened them. Just shatters him he doesn't know what to think what to do i mean so think about how you would feel if you sent one of your kids i mean let's just say off to college or something uh-huh. for, for for four years i think the moon is uh code for college and then you know you ever heard back from them you know what i mean that would be pretty cold yeah the moon is code for college and the moon has a great program in um moon studies which yeah. is uh, if you're gonna which, go there after you graduate though when are you gonna use moon studies you know what i mean so uh, um, i'm using my liberal arts education just fine <laughs> so get out of that dad hey hey i took a class called leisure and society in college Pfft, i'm still killing it yeah and look at you cutting loose for 45 minutes a day woo. uh woo. um so uh, so he, after his confidence is sort of shattered, he uh, Allison, who has decided she, with the apocalypse coming, she's going to go back to be with her daughter. Uh, she can't get a flight out for a day, so she um, spends the day there and is sort of like by herself. But suddenly she's like, let's finish our sweet moment. They go up to the fort. They drink the cola. It's rotten. Perhaps yeah. it's a metaphor that they yeah. need to move. They're too big. They can't go back in time and fix things. They have to move forward together, which I thought was cool. Yeah, uh, little but men- but we should talk about it. If you find old cola, you shouldn't drink it. My favorite brand of cola is old cola. Ooh, you got to get another brand, bro. Don't you just love soda after it's flat and been sitting in the sun for a little bit? No. Taking that sip, there's a cigarette button there. <laughs> that's now that's my soda. come on, man. Uh, gross. I've definitely done that in my life. Oh. Uh, uh, so they're having a day. They decide to go out. They're free of their father's um, uh, rule. They have this great dance sequence. Uh, it's yeah. a sweet fantasy. They're dancing in the moonlight, as the song says. Oh, um, can I just? I just want to say, like, sometimes when you see dance stuff on television, it's like overly produced or like made to like this person was clearly trained. But what's nice, it was like it still felt like them. It wasn't like this. Oh my god, unbelievable. Like it was nice, but it was still like just them dancing. It wasn't like overly, uh, I don't know what I'm trying to say, but I was just impressed that it wasn't overly choreographed or didn't feel like them anymore. Like it, 
They just weren't all of a sudden, oh, yeah, we can dance. Like sometimes you see movies and, oh, yeah, I just can know how to do this in unison with everybody else. Yeah, I think uh, maybe what you're saying is it didn't slip into parody. It wasn't a right. joke. It was meant to be like a sweet dance sequence. Um, we see Luther without his big gorilla body. It's them at their mm-hmm. sort of core selves connecting, which I thought yeah. was sweet. Um, and uh, and you as a romantic comedy uh, fan, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, must have loved this. Oh, man. Are you kidding me? I was eating my rom-com heart out. Nice. Um, what a graphic way of saying that. So they uh, they finish their dance. Um, it feels like they can't quite. Uh, they they don't fully connect. They go about their separate ways, and then the time resets, and we move forward from there. Mm-hmm. Um, who should we talk about next? There was a nice moment though when they said when she was like, instead of "I'm going to go catch my flight," she was like, "We can go catch my flight." Right, because they were going to go together. Together. Um, but you They're can tell they were a unit. But you can tell Luther. Do you away. think? Do you think Luther is going to go? Yeah, he's going to go. He's been dreaming wow. about this forever. Mm, maybe I don't know. I don't think he was going to go. Fuck you, man. Oh uh, wow, you really are a believer in the romantic comedies. Yeah. Um, let's talk. Uh, we talked about Diego um, and Klaus. Um, mm-hmm. By the end of it, uh, with Diego's help, after they talk about their love interests, um, he wanna... does start to sober up, and he does get to see Dave um, right at the end of the episode. Uh, again, we don't know what was going to happen there because the time resets. Um, Diego, um, who has been the most connected with um, the mom, the mom bot. Yeah. Uh, mom we, bot. Uh, he, he's like, hey, you can be free now. He's trying to free her. He still cares for her despite the fact that he found out that she's not a human. And in the end, uh, she sort of opens up to him and says, hey, we're lying to you. Pogo and I have been lying to you. Now, to me, this is the most important information that was erased that we never yes. got. Yes. Um, and uh, I think we're going to get it pretty soon. Well, I don't know. You don't think so? I don't know. It'd just be forever lost. Could be. Um, but yes, another great mystery set up. Uh, and I, you, to your point, I think we are going to um, get it, uh, get the information perhaps in the very next episode. Yeah. Um, Do you want to talk about Vanya and the evil douche? Yeah, let's talk about Vanya. So evil douche who is manipulating Vanya uh, convinces her to go back to the house so he can get some creepy figurine. And she goes back and is like, hey, guys, what's going on? And they're like, no time, end of the world, three days. Which is weird to me because, like, first off, if the world's ending in three days, I'm going to want as many people to help us with that as possible. I'm not going to be like, sorry, you don't have powers. Like, powers regardless, they're trying to figure things out, you know? Yeah. Um, So I I think that's the whole crux here. Like, they never have never respected her. They... It's the kind of thing where it felt like in the in the beginning, maybe it was like, oh, we have to take care of Vanya, protect Vanya. Yeah. She doesn't have powers. So she was always the one um, that they were being careful around. And then it just became easier to leave her out. So she was never part of the mission. And that sort of inherently like nice thing of protecting just uh, metastasized into becoming this thing that actually drove them apart. And now she has huge issues with being left out. Yeah. And unfortunately, um, we learn that she has these powers that are growing. Yeah, and affected by her mood, it seems like. Yes. Um, and it's, uh, to your point where we were talking about earlier, d- did Professor Hargreaves know? I think, yeah. I think that's why he was keeping her medicated, and he sort of kept her with the family. He knew she was the apocalypse. She was yeah. the danger that um, maybe the, the they would only- end up. The only problem I have is that, like, how cold the father was. It's just really hard every time we kind of go back to him to see. He had so many opportunities to not turn these individuals into, like, broken people, you know? Yeah. And so it was. It's, it's heartbreaking every time we kind of have a flashback and you see him be cold again. Well, I think that's the lesson of the, of the series, or at least this first season. It's like... Um, you know, you can have all the power in the world and like train all day, but you have to be people and you have to be able to connect with each other. Otherwise, it's all a huge waste of time yep. and you end up um, in the apocalypse. Yeah. That's why we well, connect over podcasts. Otherwise, 
your powers will get out of control. Oh, man. Let's hope not. Honestly, we're pretty close. So her <laughs> power, so she gets in a fight with the rest of the Umbrella Academy. Um, Leonard steals a figurine for some reason. Mm-hmm. Um, her powers are growing. Leonard's taking notice. Um, he's still being sweet to her, but even she is, uh, she feels like she's like fully on board with him throughout. And then we get to the end of the episode where she finds his journal. Yeah. Um, underneath the bed, and it turns out that he has been... He has a bunch of information on her. He's up to no good with her. We don't really know what his deal Which is. Which is exciting for her to finally know that, but then it's taken away, so it's it's heartbreaking. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, we, we lose... She loses that revelation, putting us back into sort of a, not a great place um, at the end of the episode yeah. um, with the Vanya storyline. Yeah. Uh, let's talk... Number let's five. talk... Number five. Yeah. Um, he's sort of, uh, you know, he's become the crux of the series. He's sort of the keeper of the mystery. And yeah. a lot of the stuff in this episode is really fun, uh, really um, interesting world that they've built um, I just around want, him. I Go just ahead. want to take a moment and just say the actor who is playing number five is unbelievable because he has to play a kid who's a man. And uh, does it just so well with some of the looks that he gives. And just, uh, I've been really impressed with this uh, actor. And then when, in this episode, they're like, oh, yeah, we'll get you a new body. We'll get you the right age. And I was just like, no, I don't want to lose this actor. Absolutely killing it. Yeah. I mean, he's got, he gives off big Jason, uh, Jason Schwartzman energy. Um, uh, very yeah. Rushmore. No, but I think in a good way. Like he is uh, in the movie Rushmore. He's a kid that's beyond his years, and that's what Five is as well. He's just solving, um, trying to stop the apocalypse from happening. Right. But from the beginning of this of the season, we don't know. Five seems to be questionable, uh, motivation wise. Like, is he up to no good? And as it's gone on, it seems like he is up to good. He's trying his hardest to save his family and save the world. Yeah, yeah. Um. So he's um, he so gets, he gets promoted. In the end of last episode, he agreed um, the the commission that sent Hazel and Cha Cha to kill him. He's agreed to take a management role there, get into the corporate structure, get that four hundred one k. Yeah, he uh, sells out basically. He's sell out. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, but he did, did to save his family. Yeah, he wants a new body mm-hmm. as well. He wants. Uh, he's sick of this kid stuff, which I totally get. Yeah, I'm I'm trapped in a child's body as well. <laughs> um, I wanted to say, um, as big comic book fans, um, I love the the, commi- the way the commission is set up. It reminded me a lot of the Time Variance Authority, the TVA from the Marvel oh, Universe. Oh, wow, nice, yeah. Uh, sort of a trippy, um, similar organization in that is going to be a part of the um, uh, the Loki series um, that will eventually come out on Disney Plus. Hopefully. Yeah, um, we see in the, I think the trailer, one of the promo images, Loki's wearing a, a TVA uniform. So I think it's cool um, to look forward to to an organization like this with Loki will be fun. This is taken pretty seriously. And Loki, I think it's going to be a bit of more of a romp. Let's hope so. Yeah. Um, so uh, Five is working at his desk. He meets Dot, who um, had his case and was mm-hmm. trying to ensure the apocalypse. No, no hard, hard feelings, feelings. from her. Um, and he gets assigned dealing with the Hindenburg, a blimp. Classic, right out of the box, get the Hindenburg. Yeah, and he crushes it. He's got oh, a whole yeah. new way, he always goes for the butcher. Mm-hmm. Love a good cut of meat. What do you think, Pete? Would you travel by blimp? No. You a blimp guy? I'm not going to travel by blimp. I'm it's more a of a way. subway guy than blimpy. I just couldn't do it, you know what I mean? Uh, subway versus blimpy. Uh, yeah, the ultimate transportation-based food uh, debate. <laughs> Uh, you're going to be a blimpy guy or a subway guy. Um, both probably gross. Uh, yeah. Subway, yeah. I think, is pretty much the bottom tier. So i got to hey. give it to blimpy. But at Come the end on, of the man. day, I'm a Drex subs guy, Ooh. which is uh, the, an upstate New York chain that is very good. Nice. Uh, re- respect to that. Respect to that. Uh, even though it's called Drek, not a name you associate with good. With good <laughs> thing. That's a good point. But every time I go upstate, I get me a Drex sub. Ooh, that's nice. So we follow uh, number five. He and um, the his co- the commission contact uh, are stuck in the bathroom together. She's on an all liquid diet. Just a lot of fun stuff here. Really getting into um, what people are eating and drinking. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, yeah, it's just fun to kind of see how this office works and all that kind of stuff. There's a lot of fun office back and forth where you get like the guy who's been at his desk for a really long time and all this kinds of stuff. And then you get the old tube technology. I'm a sucker for tube technology. Ah. I feel like it's overlooked. We're not using tube technology like we should. Use I feel the tubes. Like we should be, yeah, we should be doing a more Futurama type of thing where people are traveling by tubes. But what's nice is the tubes, uh, you know, tubes. you get messages. <laughs> You can get messages to people anywhere in time and space through tubes, so it's nice. Tubes. You can tell maybe we're in your 45-minute hang sesh because you keep saying tubes. Yeah. You having your Dude, tubes. Dude, I'm going to go rip a sick, milky tube right about Dude, now, tubes. Bro. Yeah. Everything's a tube when you think about it, man. Trees Dude, are just... I saw... I saw Pahish play one time, bro, and they fucking did like a 10-minute version of tubes, bro. It was crazy. Damn it. Trees are just tubes with wood on the inside. <laughs> Uh, so, um, yes, tubes are cool. When I was a kid, the pneumatic bank drive through thing. Oof, oh, come on. Really? Man. That's really fun. made running errands with mom fun. Yeah. yeah. Um, interwoven with, um, five story is, um, Hazel and Cha-Cha. Um, the contract on five is canceled, but a new contract comes through, uh, to Cha-Cha to terminate Hazel. Uh, which, you know, that's partners. That's, you don't get in between partners. Well, that's the thing. If you're a... Hitman team, eventually that's going to happen. you got to know that that's going to happen. Yes, that's why there are very few hit Hitman teams. Yeah, yeah. I know uh, if I was going to join a Hitman team, I'd be like, listen, man, we, you got a pinky square right now. Uh, we're not going to shoot each other in the back, you know what I mean? That's nice. And as we know, the pinky square is the ultimate, the only law yeah. that you assassins follow. You can't break a pinky square. No, exactly. It's the smallest finger, but it's the biggest promise. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, put that on my tombstone. Uh, so um, Cha Cha is like, well, I'm going to kill Hazel. Struggles with it. Um, can't do it. Uh, meanwhile, back in the, at the commission, five and the commission lady are they're really hanging. They're eating some candy that um, tastes like the decade it's from. That doesn't sound fun. No, you wouldn't want some gritty '70s candy. No, I don't want to taste the '50s, '70s, '80s. No. What do you think the most flavorful decade is? 90s, baby. Come really? On. Come on! See, I feel like you can just taste... 90s are like Laffy Taffy or something. Yeah! I mean, that's a pinnacle. Yuck. Don't no. like it. Um, give me a good dose of the 20s. <laughs> no way, man! The candy from the 20s is just gin. <laughs> no way, man. There's a little racism in there. No thanks. I Pretty sure all the decades have racism in them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sadly, uh, when you true. think about it. Um, yeah. So uh, Five also gets to sample some of um, the weaponry around the office, yeah. which I think is fun. Yeah. Um, plays up big um, in the sort of final moments here. Um, Five finally um, is sick of playing corporate and has to make moves, running out of time, despite the fact he can control time to some degree. He goes after Gloria, the woman in charge of the tubes. Yeah, and, and she's, you hate to see that because Gloria's a nice lady. She doesn't deserve that. No, but she's, you know, it's a lot of tubes to manage, and she's not ripping tubes. She's watching tubes. Yeah, that's a big difference. Yeah, big difference. Um, Harder he flips, to watch tubes than rip them. Yeah, that's, well, not technically true. Depends on how many tubes you're into. Yeah, that's a good point. You can watch way more tubes than you can rip, my man. <laughs> Depending on what minute of your relaxation, uh, your relaxing part of the day you're in. Yeah. Uh, so five flips Hazel and Cha-Cha on each other um, with a classic spy versus spy maneuver. Oh, man. You love to see it. You love to see that. Um, and then he gets busted. Um, and that uh, causes him to throw some throw the uh, commission office into chaos. He bails hard. He blows up the uh, his contact. What, some... Grenades uh, from, you know, the Vietnam era still work. Still, still popular. very popular. Yeah. Yeah. Still unbelievably uh, blowing shit up. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, I wonder how true that is um, when it comes to, I feel like that stuff just is goes bad or blows up by accident. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Um, so he uh, wreaks havoc, steals a briefcase, and uh, makes his escape. Travels back to the meeting that we talked about with the Umbrella Academy um, at, from the beginning of the episode, thus erasing the day. It became the day that wasn't, the title of the episode. See what they did there. Yes. 
Um, he gives the team a pep talk. He says they need to stick together. But After he steals the coffee and chugs it, you know. Yeah. I oh, know, as you do. A yeah. extra caffeine hit. Long mm-hmm. day. Um, but I think the, to the point we were talking about earlier, he says we need to stick together. We need to move past our individual issues. But I think that's his Achilles heel here. They need to solve their issues and then come together. Yeah, exactly. That's the problem. They're trying to force something. They need to, to you know, sit down, have a chat, talk things out, get closer as a group, and then try to work together. Exactly. Um, but they don't. They don't solve their issues, but they sort of feel like they are going to come together to try to move forward with the one clue that Five did get, um, that they need to protect Harold Jenkins. Yeah. Now, to you know who that is, and then do you know who that really is? Uh, no, I mean, I haven't watched ahead, so. Well, that's the boyfriend of Vanya. Mm-hmm. That's just his name. So yep. that should be your first clue. And then secondly, if you Google that name, uh, it's a real name of Conrad Twitty, who is a uh, singer. Conway Twitty? Yeah, Conway Twitty. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that's a fun fact. His real name is that. That is a fun fact. Pete. Yeah. Look at you getting after some... Uh, well, I like Conway how you're Twitty. Googling it because you don't believe me. No, I believe you. I just want to know what Conway Twitty's big song was, and it was Hello Darlin'. I believe, Uh, at least one of them, because I remember Conway Twitty when I was growing up uh, watching TV and they would still advertise for all of those like, buy these albums of country hits. I grew up in upstate New York and there was always a cut to Conway Twitty where he said, hello, darling, nice to see you. It's been a long time. And that's a young Conway Twitty right there. Wow, that's uh, yeah. The only way I know him is because of Family Guy. Interesting, uh, interesting. Both fully. Mine's a little nostalgic trip down memory lane, and mm-hmm. yours is just watching a show when you're no doubt fully tubed up. <laughs> uh, so that's the episode, Pete. Um, you did have one more question that you asked at the beginning. Yeah. And I said, hold off. Um, would you like to ask that question again? Yeah. What do you think is the thing that we lost that's the most important in the day that wasn't great question and asked at the correct time um i think it is vanya seeing that um Leonard, oh yeah the uh reading the journal um, i just feel like what sucks for me is like the whole pogo mom thing they know something they're still like enacting dad's wishes in a way that's creeping me out and if they just had the information they could do better as a team you know plus you don't like a monkey that's lied to you well you've sure. been lied to by monkeys in the past yeah i've had my heart broken by a couple of monkeys in my life yeah. and it's, it's they stole a lollipop from you as a child uh, no, I was actually on a uh, trip in Costa Rica, and I saw uh, this monkey rob a very nice couple of their belongings, and it was uh, it was very traumatizing. Wow! Uh, there you go. Wow, there's a deep there is a deep seated issue to why you uh, think that Po goes up to no good. Yeah. Um, okay, great. Uh, that's the episode. Great episode, I thought. Yeah, what did you I, think across? I really the board? liked the episode. Um, you know, the will they, won't they with Allison and Luther is killing me, but, um, you know, and it's also tough to watch Vanya just go finally kind of find herself, but because of an evil person is tough. Yeah. And I, yeah, she's feels like she's finding power, but she's not fixing her issues. And so, right. yeah, uh, hopefully that will, um, happen uh in the next few episodes as we come to the end of season one and then a, we'll dip right into season two, which is out now. Yeah, I can't to wait up. to watch. And I just got to say, since Zeldin's not here, we got to show Klaus uh, extra love. Uh, just an amazing actor, the guy who's playing Klaus, and such a yeah. fun character. Just to see Klaus uh, deal with all this stuff, it's kind of crazy. And, well, I, not, and I really but, want more Ben as well. Yeah. Uh, well, let's choose. We haven't chosen yet. Our, our best uh, best boy, best uh, character of the episode. Um, who do you say, Pete? Uh, it's tough. It's tough. Oh, man. 
You were uh, just talking about Klaus a minute. I, I, I was, but I'm also uh, stuck between because I really appreciated, uh, you know, Luther's stuff as well. He like he finally kind of manned up and and got the kiss and did the dance. So I'm gonna have to go with Luther. Nice, uh, great answer. That's what I was going to pick as well. Oh. So um, I'll give a shout out to Conway Twitty um, as always. Uh, <laughs> but I'm gonna give it up for number five. I think. Um, yeah. This, uh, like I said earlier, like we were dubious of him, I think, uh, as the season began. And it's nice to see him fully step into this chaotic hero role, um, despite the fact that he may be leading the, the team away from their emotional solution. He is definitely leading them toward uh, the apocalypse and hopefully bring it to a close. And I appreciate that. He's the man with a plan. And that's good stuff. Wait, let me just ask you, you're going to die in three days. Where do you go? Uh, I'd, uh, I guess probably, um, uh, boat, boat to Nebraska. Nice. Is nice that, to, uh, yeah. that's the landlocked version of driving to Hawaii. Yeah. yeah nice job, man. Nice uh, job. Great. Um, that's the episode guys. Uh, come back here. We'll be back very soon with the next episode. The yeah. day that was, uh, a perfect, Ooh. um, other bookend to this episode, perhaps looking forward. I haven't watched it yet. Looking forward to see it. Yeah. Um, if you like this podcast, please uh, throw, us, uh, throw us a review. Subscribe if you aren't already. Uh, we have a, do a ton more podcasts. We do a podcast about the boys. We're just about to kick into season two of that, which comes out at the end of the month. And um, also, uh, if you think we're funny, uh, if you get on our Patreon, we have a Patreon Slack, which is a lot of fun. Amazing characters on there that we go back and forth with. Join the fun if you want. Yeah, we have a dedicated Umbrella uh, Pod Academy channel to talk about all things Umbrella, including the comic books. And um, please come check out our uh, flagship show, Comic Book Club, which we do every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. live on Crowdcast. Oh, come. we got a show later. Yeah, uh, later tonight. Come hang out. It's going to be super fun. Uh, we do it every week. Um, uh, no matter what happens, we will see you there. And in the meantime, stay loose, stay frosty, because this substitute teaching time <laughs> is never over. Tubes! <laughs>